pushing presents for Shun. Yeah, wanting to make sure he has comfort on that jungle. And again, a lot of, I'll just say, a lot of our more aggressive lanes are taken away. BLG do end up going with the Kaelin. This is something that Elk has played this split. They've played yep. it three times and actually two in one. Tez being quick with their follow up. We know he expected the Nami. Maokai, especially earlier in playoffs, was something that was becoming really high priority. Again, that was the whole storyline around, around Weibo, Nymera, like Weibo Happy Tree. You know, no, <laughs> not happy. Uh, but Tez going to lean into it. So a lot of, you know, easier setups with, with vision and controlling objectives going to be there with those saplings and with that Maokai ultimate. And this actually sets up for a very interesting second phase for them because to me, this feels like the, that Cream is getting some sticks here. He's getting some fisticuffs to fight of his own. I'm very interested in what they want to go for to pair up with Tien on the Maokai and a lot of the, the objective control you can have, which was lacking, I feel like, in that first game for top esports. That Lux lock-in, though, you always know. BLG got to keep it spicy. And the Caitlyn Lux, super good together. Yeah, I'm curious of what Cream could go here, because Tristana would have been the first thing that jumps to mind that he plays. The other big one that would come to mind would be Nico, but Nico isn't something that that, that Cream has really shown that, that he's able to lean on. I think those are the two big picks that can, like, really jump into a fight and try and find that that access onto what is a very long range bot yeah. right hell you're going to be seeing lux and caitlin olds killing enemy junglers in their <laughs> own jungle so uh yeah it's about closing the distance i think a lot of what tez needs to round up their composition with which is kind of funny because that would be leaning back on what, what cream's old champion pool yep. was but i think a lot then would depend on what night shows and hell blg can just save that that last pick for for mid and that's a conversation I really love uh, for Cream, who has had so much success on OMG, who in recency, at least his last uh, few, I guess maybe the, the year before last on OMG, he had some failings, it feels like, as a mid laner. But he has slotted in so well onto this extremely experienced and tenured top esports team. And his flexibility in draft is what I really love to see them use this split. Rek'Sai is locked in for the second phase here by BLG. You know what else might be obnoxious despite being very nerfed and us not seeing much more of? Is if he just ends up going Karma and we have all these shields, all of this poke on their composition for the Caitlyn, for the Zid to be able to he play He was with. insane now, on it the last time around. Yeah, yeah, they were a team who were really able to make that pick work. But now for TS, Again, we don't have a lot of great answers yo, to the Rek'Sai, but yo. there we go. We actually have the, the original. The original. Oh my God, I love it. Oh man, it was so funny to me whenever I was uh, guesting on LCS this split that Whippo has become a prominent figure in LCS and he still talks about his memories with 369 in solo queue in China and his the Urga, oh my God, I'm so excited to see this one. But it also gives them a lot of lane presence for top esports. Yeah, gonna want, gonna want to hope and try to bully out in that top side. TS, you can see, showing the Yone, thinking of going that route of, of bringing even more engaged. They can go AD having uh, the Maokai in the jungle, but instead opt out of it. Azir will still be able to try to find those angles himself with the Emperor's Divide onto the Lux and Caitlyn, but providing you more consistent DPS, gonna be able to try and stay uh, a fair bit away from things like yeah. the Xin Zhao and the Rek'Sai. Right now, hovering things like the Aesol. So it seems like, okay, BLG end up locking in the, the Vagar, right. but still, it, the, the name of the game would have been the same, right? Playing out through the range, really trying to just not allow TS to come into you. Uh, and BLG have, have lent on this style multiple times, Charles, but again, they, they've already played this Caitlyn Lux duo three times so far, and we're, we're generally finding success with it. Uh, I hope everybody's getting their invites for the party bot lane again. Uh, I hope this time everyone gets everything they asked for. Uh, but I think the, the real conversation is how quickly Shun and Tian are going to get down there. And, and I do really like, as just a little caveat for the, the Vagar, uh, the amount of peel and denying of that nature's grasp, the entrance at least from the Maokai of Tian, that's huge. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, really might be able to, to, to prevent so many plays from being able to come through. And this one's going to be interesting. I think especially with the addition of that Urgot in top lane, I'm, I'm really curious to see how that matchup goes with Zell. And if 369 is really just going to be able to like drive this one home and, and how much jungle attention that ends up pulling. True. So a lot of questions to be asked. And again, neither of these teams showing their full hands just yet, getting a curveball every time. In game number one, we talked so much about these teams being our two most dominant early game teams. It doesn't mean they can't fight in late game, but we have seen them completely destroy games. BLG, 
they had TS in a chokehold in that game number one. TS need to bounce back. This is a spot at MSI. This is a spot in the finals. You want to have a knockout drag out fight. And it's game number two between Billy Billy and top esports. Legends abound, but all of this on a potential comeback from top esports after game number one. God, I love these crowds, man. Just give it up for the audience. I, I I appreciate the energy so much. I'm sure the players do as well. But that's an intense matchup. So many stars. So many world champions on the side of top esports. And a super team in the making, it feels like. A very rambunctious split so far here, Lyric. Yeah, they've, again, really showing their stuff. It's just being able to take down JVG in that last series. Now, going to have to be able to come back against BLG, who, again, have a lot of range to be able to play with. So they're going to try and just bully their way in here with Ons E. You could see people like Jack Hill and Mako waiting in the wings, but I don't really know how much they could do to contest this. <laughs> I'm going to take oh, a ton of damage. They're actually going to fight for it. Oh, man. He's going to burn the flash and they heal double summoner spells on the bot side burn from top esports. We saw the last time that Jackie Love didn't have flash. It didn't go well. BLG can use this level one to move on to TN. He does end up getting that one away. It is split one for two here between the junglers. Still, though, you've, you've created a bunch of pressure. You've chunked TN. You've gotten sums around bot and BLG. <laughs> Violence Let's is go. the name Let's of go. the game. I love it. They just want the advantage. Okay, should, should go for the uh, vision to see if TN had been down here because they realize it could be dicey if they do. TN having taken this unique path to try to go down here. Now he's just like, okay, thumbs up, guys. I guess BLG really want bot side presence. I love that they're playing this like an adventure game, just, you know, wandering around. What a three kind of adventure board. game is this? The, you know, the, the kind where you're given a quest of, of people you need to kill. You got a hit list uh... and they're hoping for it. But we come back to lane again. BLG have found an advantage to this early game and kind of looking more holistically at what BLG want to do, right? We, we talked about in draft jungle pressure on bot lane. But for BLG, it's not really about finding kills. It's about enabling the 2v2 to bully out through the range. TS, though, they want to find the kills. They need kills on Jackie Love to have any success. Tian has skirted around any vision, even though there wasn't really any up there, but can't get it because of how much range BLG can play with over here. Shun now making his way back down, which is putting a lot of threat onto TS, but on still not level two. Ooh, if they get one light binding from on, it could make the biggest difference here. The slow gonna come down. Jackie Love stepping up to force on back. The tension is huge down here. And TS, no. They give up this presence. The Caitlyn Lux will rule this bot lane kingdom. They cannot let that happen. Mako flashing. My goodness, the damage potential there. And they're going to crash the wave as well. Shun and Tian just standing there. The longer the standoff goes on, the more it just favors them, right? Because this is pretty much the name of the game for Shun, which is find out where Tien is, hover around bot side, yep. make sure it's lit up and, and just allow Elk and on to be able to be the, the wrecking crew that the Caitlyn Lux is primed to be in now. Again, getting even another summoner off of it with Mako's heal now being left open to these plates. Uh, we did see, just to kind of go back to the opposite side of the map, because who, who knows mm -hmm, when we'll really be able to talk to that. 369 obviously did have pressure in lane. You'd expect it from range versus melee. And even uh, Urgot's passive, you know, the shotgun legs giving you that, that max AP damage will really come in as a big thing later on. But still, been doing just fine, able to keep up with CS in that matchup. Let's see if that actually ends out being anything. 369 on his Urgot here. As we see, the last time played was himself with Top Esports back in 2020. I'd love to see it. It's been 1,358 days since this. Oh, and that, I, I, I think that'd be against all of them too, being against DMO. Can't remember if he left the following year, if he left in summer of 2020. <laughs> that kind of makes it even Roll back. Oh, the flash. Look at on making the plays. And we got to talk about this guy. Game number one, he picks out the Camille. He takes Mako to task. Game number two, he is setting up everything already five minutes in. And I mean, Mako just thinking he has a window. Jackie Love might get punished too on. Gonna throw out the E, but Jackie Love's gonna get away in time. But yeah, on finding the opportunity. Mako feeling safe going for that. Tian wasn't too far away. It was like up more towards mid in Rever, but still. 
I mean, there was enough distance there for BLG to be able to find the kill in no time for any follow-up to, to show up. The craziest thing is on is not some new player. Yes, he's made a, a big splash for his game on DLG itself, but right, like we've seen him on Suning, we've seen him on Weibo. It, he never made the biggest difference, but here it feels like he's setting the tempo in this bot lane 2v2 with two world champs. Yeah, he's a really just been doing a great job again, like so, so consistent uh, as a support towards the top end over this past year. Still, we're going to see TS at least able to find something with the pressure that 369's been able to generate, picking up uh, the grubs the right grubbies. now. And now 369. Oh. oh, he walked into the trap there. That cleanse does end up saving a decent amount, though. But uh, Jackie Love going to be worse for wear, and that's a decent summoner spell cooldown as those three grubs finally go over to TN. I'm so desperately trying to make top lane matter since we have a top lane. Can't you know, do it. A, it doesn't well, yeah, matter. It doesn't it's work. an island. It, it absolutely does not mean anything because yeah again it really is just coming down to to the tussle on bot side slight cs lead as you'd expect for on and out but now the big thing is i'm starting to get the ball rolling with the drakes we saw it actually lead out to so much success for blg in the last game setting their tempo of getting those objectives taking the early trade of those grubs to top esports even though they were on the other side it's going to be a continued success here for them where Shun has found uh, a decent CS differential over Tian. He'll keep upgrading that, I feel like, in this fashion. And I, I do wonder, is there some proactivity that needs to come from top esports back towards bottom side? Or are they fine getting to a point where they can get team fights going? I mean, I think if this game goes to distance, like TS are completely fine. I think 369 should be able to keep generating pressure like throughout the game. Again, he's going to be a real source of damage later on. You have low cooldowns. You have that damage coming out from your passive. You have in his ear. You have a front line in the Maokai. Like you're, you're checking every box. A lot of it's going to come down to to just the executions and like the angles they could find, right? I think TS are gonna have to, not not to the, the crazy extent, right? As BLG with the Camille and the Vi last game, but it's gonna be about trying to find some of those angles to just close the distance against BLG's comp. You should assume they should be able to get Priya wherever they send their artillery squad in the Caitlyn Lux. You're gonna have ways to be able to get around that as the game progresses. But sadly, during the laning phase, they really will yeah. just be locked in down in this 1v1. But again, look, there's both their soul laners are winning. We haven't talked about Crane, but even he's finding a bit of an advantage up against Knight. Yeah, it's really big to have those little advantages to play around for Tia. Oh, he's not gonna be able to get the damage there in the end as Ben makes it out alive. Uh, see some more tussling, I feel like, come between these two top laners as time progresses, Tian. Going for a little bit of vision onto Shun, but not gonna find anything. But back towards bot side we go. As, as we'll always as we story. always do but still we haven't actually seen the Kalen oh let's get it getting the calling damage down early pretty nice making you know trying to stop those uh potential abilities for aggression later on we haven't actually seen the ability for blg's bottling to actually push forward aggressively and really get plates other than just the one so far and that was a big difference in game number one too <laughs> we had plates everywhere on top and bot side uh, we actually get a nice little collapse here with Shun, no vision. Here, wind does become lightning and Mako gonna have to burn his flash yet again. So they do manage to get that. We're even getting close to sixes. Elk just hitting his now. And again, we're gonna be able to see BLG just start using this as poke tools to get Jackie Love and Mako out of lane and, and finally start being able to take these plates. But we saw knight actually make his way down oh he might be able to pinch tian mm, could be big okay okay oh he got a little bit of damage there coming in as well with the ace in the hole he will end up burning the flash that's big on the maokai we've seen so many plays with that flash bramble smash yeah so gonna be able to make sure that it's even harder for him to be able to close the distance when we said for ts at least once we get That's post what they gotta do. <laughs> yeah that'll, that'll be with a look as knight finds a nice cage shouldn't really be able to get too much more than just a bit of damage here oh my goodness he has oh, the wow. primordial burst yeah he knows he has flash too he's gonna walk up does he have the damage the calculation it and does. it's the golden left hand that strikes at the heart of ts sadly cream again a younger player coming in up against one of the goats in night and night finds such a beautiful opportunity and gets the solo kill off.
that's so big and a big setup for the scaling aspect of blg that's something i wanted to talk about earlier is no matter what top esports have yes we talked so much about their scaling as well knight has picked this vigar pick for a reason they have so much cc they have so much layering and he will scale to infinity and again, the, the, just the cage just provides also that, that space deterrence is, uh, who cares about that? Because 369 now has to have a bit He's of He's got eight medicine. legs, okay, Lyric? He can move fast. Still though, you know, I don't think it'd be ideal is for it him eight to legs be down or is a it flash. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's Urgot, six. Urgot can have as many legs as he pleases. Wait, he's got six legs and two arms, so it equals... Eight. Okay, it's fine. I, I, my math is fine. Results-based analysis. We're going to take a look back at Knight's exactly. solo kill. This is what we want to see, right? I mean, it's really just great use of the cage, not having that dash there as we just saw it being already used by Cream, which is why the flash has to be forced out. And I love it. Like you said, having the ult, just running him down and then being able to finish it off with the ult again. God, Cream's, so Cream's first time at, at the very least. Like, who knows where TS can go from here? They could still win yeah. the series. Very least top three highest he's ever been. But now having to contend with those juggernauts like Knight. I will say those like, da -da! sound came up as soon as Cream flashed. Knight was like, oh, I got this all day. Uh, Tien is looking at in here. Won't be able to find him. They've got so much mobility to play with here for BLG in the early parts of the game. We are getting a collapse around these grubs and Top Esports going to start it up. BLG's composition plays a lot better when it's already on the objective first and it could really try to zone you away, but still they, they have the poke to be able to play with to try to brute force their way in, but it's looking rough. You need to make sure they can't get collapsed on go. by the score. Nature Gust has started off calling straight to the dome, and he's going to get dragged back. 369 comes up with a big one, and that will be all six of the Telegrubbies to top esports. A nice job, TS. I mean, already making their way up there, playing off 369's pride to, to start those off. And again, usually you want the Caitlyn there first, setting down the traps. The Lux constantly throwing out the poke, and that was impossible. So going to be able to find some, some nice advantages now with the six. That as well as the first item spike coming up. We already get the static ship. Oh, cream. Uh, you don't have flash this time, but you do have Emperor's Divine. This <laughs> shit just going to flash for him. He wants to get a little bit more damage here. You have Tien coming down the way as they won't. Actually, they're just going to commit for it. Okay. They really want Kareem. They want some more stacks. Soon gets out alive. Knight's still alive too. He has the cage to deny Tien and maybe return it around here. Get some damage back onto him and BLG make out like bandits. I mean, BLG real. Oh, oh wait. Oh. oh. Actually forced close. back in the end. Not feeling confident, just fully committing for that dive. I actually have the angle here. That nice little light binding oh. with the ulti flash play too. They're going to get the TP out. No, though, as that will be Cream joining the push. They could get some more plates up here. They have about a minute to get more TP in response from Knight. Still Cream having the TP up here after how scary that almost looked. Really being back and forth. On had to blow his flash, but he ended up getting both of Jackie Love's sums. So just like last game, it feels like any time I'm looking over at Jackie Love, those just not being available. BLG doing such a good job of consistently punishing him and making sure he's unable to get that one through. This is uh, much more of the even fighting that we would have expected. A little bit of snowball happening when uh, On gets two kills early last game, but now top esports getting more of that objective control, getting the even dragon split now, and we're getting to a point where they can use this team fight composition to move around the map. And now with uh, Harold about to come up, it could be another place where they can show off, right? You already have Jackie Love in top side, so they're gonna have Pryo, you can move down first. BLG gonna try and contest that through mid. But again, it just might be a bit scary with, with Jackie Love not being able to safely enter but Tien's ult can also just still cause so many problems for the whole of BLG's composition. They're actually moving down here. The Rift Herald is up. And uh, Tien gonna try to take the Scuttle Crab here to force a little bit of presence around it. Top Esports just looking to continue objective dominance. And this is uh, much more the fashion where Top Esports have control of the map. Even though it's not a big lead, even though we're dead even, they are in the driver's seat, it feels like. And BLG trying to wrestle that away from them. I feel like the threat of the Urgot should just be so much for them. I mean, he already has his Black Cleaver done. Vin hasn't been able to finish up his Sunfire just yet. They do both have TP. So if 369 did TP in here, that could be the difference maker that would inch this towards Tez. 
But Tezzer taking their time. Cream pushed in that wave top, and now Knight is forced to answer. You can see him leaning down, which is enabling this aggression from the rest of DES. And I think a little thing to look out for uh, is once Jackie Love gets to that second, third item, the immediate en en engages, especially with his dash, to take big chunks of health off people is going to be super important for top esports. They are just forcing the fight over this Rift Herald. And soon on the other side, we will get the 1v1 with Knight up here. He gets pushed back. The Rift Herald goes over to Tien. They're going to take the fight here too as Jackie Love using the culling. That is the Crescent Guard used as well. So a couple big ultis and a tussle at top side too. Yeah, TS really were hoping to be able to find a fight or a kill there, but still at least they get, you know, they get they get the minimum prize. They got the Rift Herald. That's what they showed up for and, and they were able to pick it up. So now that they're transitioning that into a top lane turret as well, really nice. Just kind of last minute sequence from TS, but PLG now. Wow. They really want to come contest. The Crescent Guard does so much. Just, oh no, Tien. He has Primordial Burst. He can do so much damage. Just a couple more trades there. Knight wants it. He has Flash. Doesn't want to go for it just yet. They are going to move forward, but that bubble pulls them off. Mako saving his jungler. As Cream using his Sun Disc in the top side. We have to look at now 369 on the opposite side of the map trying to get some work done into his turret. Yeah, having a bit of a CS lead. Uh, so Bin is losing out, but he just got off his reset. Has finally gotten the Sunfire Cape bought up. Still not really going to change the dynamic of the 1v1 <laughs> again. 369 is really just being a terror with that Urgot. And this is, again, like the evolution of TS, where maybe past years of TS would slam their foot on the pedal a, a bit more aggressively at this point in the game. But it's like, hey, we have the grubs. Again, they made that nice lean up towards topside after getting mid pressure. And now that's I expect them to do a bit of the same, right? Playing a bit of the map, start leaning down into bot side jungle and getting vision set up to make it hard for BLG to be able to walk in. And that might be your avenue where, where you finally find the picks you've been looking for. Top Esports will once again hit the milestone of uh, first turret in a game. Consistent success story for them, even though it didn't work out for them last game. Ooh, and a half Mako's Hell taken down in the trade. And uh, that's what BLG are looking for. That right there, that's the recipe for success with a little bit more follow up. Still needing a bit of time too to get some of these items going. Is <laughs> ah, I'm getting tense. I'm getting tense. Both, <laughs> both the teams, 3v3s, are in the same area. And it feels like every time that happens. Uh, we see the contest come out as Shun having no fear of contesting these rap Raptors, but Jackie has been doing such a great job, man, with this yeah, calling, forcing Elker on out and, and really not giving them the freedom. Hell, this is one of the one of the only times really seeing BLG not able to get into positions where the Caitlyn and, and Lux thrive so far this split. They're going to get so many mites, too. They have Kareem coming down. TP from Knight joining the bubble with the Crescent Guard pop. That cleanse from Jackie Love is pretty big. The Ace and Hole used the Nature's Grasp. Not going to catch anybody but soon, but here comes the play. Kareem making the big dash, and they actually find them, but he's under turret still. He's taking so much damage, and it's actually a Jackie big kill back from BLG. They get a big baby cage. Oh, my God. You might be crying after that one. Oh, he gets one back, but it's still BLG who scrap out a four for two. My eyes were on Kareem, and then suddenly I look over and Bin is just on top of Jackie Love. I cannot wait to get a replay to see exactly how all that went down because my God, BLG somehow kiting it out well enough to be able to come out on top and finish off the mid lane turret. But it's all going to be from here. Like you said, a ton of mites. Coming through, Jackula forced to use that cleanse early on tonight with a really good cage. But it's like, all right, we know Cream's going upward, but how do they? God. How, how do they find their way on to Jackula? Oh, he just circumvents right as Tien goes yeah, in, yeah. moves on his way out. Looks like 369 using his ult on to Zinjao, so not really gonna have much left in the tank as this goes on. And then yeah, a great performance by Elk and Knight to be to be able to just kite this one forward. Sure, he goes down in the end, but enough was done. Biggest thing about this Rek'Sai size, we haven't seen true answers into it. The answer has been, can you be bigger in team fights? Both 369 and Bin have been massive already in the few engages that they've been a part of. Now we get a dragon reset, and this is second dragon. It's not that big of an objective, but momentum is key, and both these teams want to fight. TS having a bit of the easier time we're seeing with the saplings there. Just keep tabs on where BLG are, but that's not deterring BLG from trying to find an angle with Bin. 
369 stepping up. Look at that health bar. That's going to be big. Jackie Love getting some damage on the bin. They will pull back after the dragon. Nature's Grass coming out soon. Going to try to tank this one up. Crescent Guard there. Tien gets the dragon now as well. BLG trying to move out, but here comes the tidal wave to single the advance. Big catch oh. out back. Kareem going for the play, but it doesn't matter because he's already dead. Soon bites the dust. And now here comes a nice engage from Top Esports. The Void Rush not going to be enough to take down 369. And a beautiful team fight from Top Esports, even though they also get the dragon, they get kills, they will end up keeping pressure out in mid. And hell, looks like they might even get a bot lane turret off of this with, with 369 already being down there. No one to contend with. There's no TP for, for Ben, even if he did come back up. But no, actually not feeling confident enough to keep pressuring with that HP. Yes, he doesn't know that there's uh, no members on this side of the map, but you're right. Great to see TS still having some fight in them. And hell, even maintaining a gold lead back. Thanks, 369. I look a little <laughs> bit less wrong. There you go. We got to take a look back at this one, though. The uh, cage Dude. used to block out, but didn't matter. It's crazy, because not only the cage, but we're going to see a binding from on here that I thought would completely disrupt the play. It's like, how can they keep going? Well, there's your answer, Cream. Binding <laughs> away. And it seems like Shun also did kind of just accept his fate a little bit there, but it didn't matter. The ca the cage placement, the binding from on, it just wasn't enough. And that's why I said, right, it, it really feels like this dynamic's gonna come down to it if TS can, can find the way onto BLG's members. But even at this point, it's like, I feel like we're seeing a lot more value in the poke coming out from Jackie Love in the culling than we have really seen, uh, like actual real sticking damage coming out from the BLG dual lane. That's the most uh, interesting thing is we had such heavy presence in the 2v2 and bot side early, just like last game. And we're getting to team fights where it's very hard for these guys to navigate this. But a little bit easier execution for BLG's side. Just land a combo, land some traps, and you get somebody dead. But we are getting close to those third items, at least for Jackie Love as well. That'll be a big spike for them to utilize. And it's going to be about how BLG can pick off members before these fights. Yeah, right now, as we can see here, trying to rely on this cage to potentially set something up, but it's, it's hard, it, especially from, from behind. It's even harder to play as what BLG have picked up. We can see them even relying on people like Bin to, to re-show mid, to even give them the safety to be able to clear some of these waves. And for TS, I, I don't really feel like they're feeling too pressured themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen many times, again, especially once Culling's up, they can very easily chunk one of these members through and they have Cream right now pushing aside unanswered. So they know they're at least yeah. finding pressure somewhere for free. LG actually looking to posture up that way. And I, I think another interesting point here is how top esports have given Cream a little bit more of the onus to carry in this one. They are relying on him for a lot of the late game damage. And even though he doesn't have any kills to himself, he's already been really, really big in setting up a couple plays. Ooh. Oh no, Jackie Love. See, this is something that happened in game number one. Jackie Love got caught a couple times. You can't do that against this composition. Well, and to be fair, it was, it was looking for some of the plays that you want to see out of Illusion. He's trying to make his way up aggressively with the minions, and I think hope for an opportunity to hit tower, look to chunk. Sadly, just not expecting Elf to be right over that angle. Still not the end of the world. I mean, he did oh, have yeah. his team right behind him, and BLG not really having any easy ways of taking him down. Maybe, I guess, a binding from on chained into the ults there. Could have done a bit of damage, but even then, Jackie Love is cleanse. So power points right now. Four kills on 369's Urgot. He's almost on those three items. But another big fact is that Knight, the MVP of spring regular season, 3-0-3 oh, on the Vigar, almost on three items himself. He's really going to be the one you have to worry about because he's going to be the hardest man to find find access to with the cage. Just covers such a large area, right? And hell, even having the Banshee. So having the Spell Shield there too, just in case. Sean! There's a Crescent Guard out. The bubble doesn't connect, but that's a big utilization of a ut utility ult that BLG really want to have. It's a nice catch out and a blue buff for top esports. Not too we even shy. see 369 finishing off the Randuin. So going to have just that little bit more tankiness, that little bit more sticking power. That's scary. Yeah. And like you said, now Crescent Guard not going to be up for this dragon that's here in 30 seconds. Like, this is looking very much like, like how TS were able to find some of those wins up against JDG. Slow and steady, just, just trying to choke them out across the map. And Ben, I get choked out right now. Going to burn the flash. Does, doesn't want to get connected on in case TN can follow up, in case the rest of Top Esports can follow up. 
Bit of vision game being played towards the top side, but we've been much more reserved in this second game than we were in that first game. And it feels like top esports may be feeling a lot more comfortable in this setting. And it feels like a bunch of things, right? TS, I mean, since they got on the front foot, like having the ability to finally play their game, BLG not having a ton of tools to be able to force their way back in or force advantageous fights. And <laughs> we can see there, it's only getting harder. Jaguar playing from Fog Gavor almost up to his third item himself. But yeah, TS keeping it nice and steady now. Just need to wait another five minutes and they will be able to claim that Hextech soul. Much like blg in game number one they will have the decision making power now on the rift they have the advantage of almost three thousand gold they also now have a third item on jackie love with an ie completed there but that power feels like it, it kind of slips under the radar a lot of the times especially in a situation where you're playing so dominant that next dragon blg have to fight this is a hextech soul you cannot let that one go and top esports can be ruthless around the map because of that and they're going to keep, they're going to keep it up. As you pointed out, the IE now is huge. Jackie Love seriously is going to be hitting so incredibly hard. Uh, already having the wave up towards topside because they've been playing around cream. And I, ooh, this might be a trap. Oh, light binding. Dude, he's very tanky though. <laughs> he's, he's, got, right he's got a bunch of legs like we were saying earlier and you're losing your entire topside. Well, especially like that play only opens you up to doing this even more so, right? It's like, oh, hey, they have, they have three members there, commit towards top, start making their way back down, because at least that did give BLG the route through Oh, River. they want to collapse on them. They realize all three of them are out here. Nature's grasp isn't going to be long enough. It's not. Oh. The kitties go just a little too short. It was so close to being able to connect. Kind of, honestly, though, from the point of view, it was kind of anticlimactic. Like, all right, let's <laughs> speed up little Maokai ultimate. Tian just walked up there bold. He did not have his team with him. They were still mid lane. I think BLG realized that now Tian a little bit out, but he is very tanky. Red buff stolen, or at least taken, not stolen by BLG. It was theirs to come out with. Now Bin was looking for an angle. They have Knight on the top side of the fight. Nothing else going to come of it here, though. They're not going to be able to do anything. Finn did walk all the way over. My God, I must have Flandre just because I'm, I'm starting to associate Rek'Sai with, with Flandre, just <laughs> B1 picking Rek'Sai all the time. But Finn walking over, so I like the TS have the, the consciousness to back off. And now this is what we've been waiting for is when they're going to look to pull this Baron. Tens up, is our, our ult is already almost up again. If they do need to turn in, here we go. 369 coming in. TS have been one of the most decisive Baron teams in our league. Let's see if Tian can make the difference here. Shun looking for the play over. Shun oh. gets it. Look at the steal. Crescent Guard coming out too. He's going to buy a lot of time. Goes right back in though, sacrificing his life. Ace in the hole comes in as a celebratory thank you to Shun for taking that Baron and BLG by time. What a huge steal going over for Shun. And it feels so sad for TS who've been playing a nice game. You know, the past 15 minutes completely in their control. But now, BLG might be able to get some of those sieges they'd want set up. You're going to have Bid now with this Baron buff to at least be able to hold up against 369 with the siege squad everywhere else. They're just throwing everything at it. Both smites come out, but Shun's just being that much better, sadly, coming down to the flip. I, uh, but I, that's I, the I guess. Thing. Go ahead. Oh, you. Uh, uh, no, because uh, I, I kind of want to hear about the Baron. I, just, I think it's myself. so fun. I literally said every time I love the decision making around it. They're quick and decisive around it, but they always let it go to a 50-50. It feels like, and it's just begging for moments like this. I like that. I, I like that TS, you know, just the, the, the resident gambas over here. So we're going to see <laughs> what went down in the right side. But the, the thing that I wonder, right, is BLG have the Baron. Their comp is great at being able to seed you down. But it's like, huh, TS can just preemptively group up and again, kind of have the threat of those engages there. The LG might not actually be able to do too much, but so far they're doing a nice job. I love that they're just like pivoting in this area and river, constantly being able to threaten playing down towards Ben and at least just taking that one turret. So the threat is always there. It really is. And that's honestly, this is the kind of game that I, I really wanted to have. We get a little bit more reservation because both these teams love to explode and we are one or two big team fights away from this game exploding and that makes it so tense and with 45 seconds until a soul for top esports in a hex tech rift blg are looking to put those boxing gloves right back on we do have 
finally Lord Doms and you know even Cripploom there for Knight. So they're gonna be able to try and deal with 369 in TN if that's the only option they have in terms of hitting frontline. Ooh. Let me get this. Might actually have enough time to do this. Look at Jackie They're moving Jackie mid. 369. Yeah, they're just completely barreling down mid. Okay, BLD are just saying, let's just go for it. They're gonna finally TP in Knight, but it's a little late. And okay, he gets there at the last second. Oh, Vent Horizon, pretty big to block off the rest of Top Esports. Now BLG are on the front foot. Oh, beautiful flash from TN, and they're going to take down Knight. They strike at the MVP, and now Top Esports take an inhib to the bot side tier two that BLG got. Yeah, they're not. I, I was wondering if they'd go for anything crazy. They didn't really have a wave, but like, if you tried to commit Cream to stopping recalls, but with the Baron, it would have been impossible. Cream probably would have died, so I love it. Pivot over to the Hextech Drake, and now, I mean, a nice Hextech soul for TS. I know a lot of people were predicting this to, to, to go the distance, but it's nice to see the back and forth coming through with TS being in control of this game for, for, for almost the whole time, right? It was really only that, that like set of laning phase where it was especially just so back and forth in that 2v2. Yeah, it really was. And uh, now with this soul, we have the timer on the Elder here. BLG got to play around with that one last time. See if top esports will allow themselves to be pushed that far. It's like they have a strong upper hand even with just the 2,000 gold lead. It's about the way that their composition comes together. The fact that Jackie Love is almost on full items now and you just got a third and a half item completed for Cream. Yeah, and right, Cream. Cream went the more defensive route. Uh, having the grasp, going the abyssal mask. He already has his Zanyas. Uh, 369 as well, just finished off his Jack, so, Jack, Jack show. So it's only getting harder to actually be able to take down, not even just, I mean, not even just like the, the actual front line, but pretty much any member on TS's cream, even sitting on that buckler. I do really um, like that Elk's going the kind of crit build though. I, I think without that, it would be completely yeah. Mean. And uh, at least they have that saving grace here. Cream, ooh, he was looking for the play. He does get that sun disc in mid. His knight coming around the corner here. They're just going to press this one down. They will lose their jungle. Their top esports coming in and taking clean and house a bit. We could actually see a big part of this gold league being up in that top lane. The one between Jack oh, Love and Elf, huge. not as large, but 369 compared to Bid. Yeah, about 3,000 gold. Massive. For a guy that has been massive since his homecoming to top esports, I, I know in our previous cast, we called the best top laner in the LPL, if not maybe the world. Uh, and, and he has represented the way that he plays the top lane against a lot of our top laners where we see a lot of aggressive picks, the side lane. He is a wall that will not be cracked. Exactly. And, you know, a lot of people, especially now, like what we're seeing this year, are going to associate JDG's success, especially with Knight's success last year. But it was 369 coming in that that really started that like that, that big winning spree for JDG, right? He, he went to that roster a year before night, now leaving. He's someone I think we need to look with the same level of reverence, you know, yeah. can be able to take over a series, can be able to get TS over the line into that finals. I loved it though, on JDG, they did all those logs. My biggest uh, happiness for 369, he's the smile guy. He's the vibes guy, he's the fun guy. And uh, definitely bringing some fun with the Urigati here at the top side, maybe not to Bin's fun. As TS moving out with Jackie Love, they'll get so much damage on Shun, and now they can just push up mid lane. Yeah, they're gonna just gonna be able to barrel through this one. I mean, it, it feels like it'd be really hard to just outright force the end without at least playing in another side. But maybe they're just waiting for the Baron to come up. In though, like like you're mm at, mm. trying to be sneaky. Mm. It's a trap though, it's a double trap. Maybe they get cream, do they though? No, it's Jackie Love that bounces first. Both the bot laners are down. Big shove into the barrel that is BLG and they are being completely taken out one by little one. Soon finally joins the rest of his team and Knight, you're very close to that one too. Cream coming over the top here. He's getting a decent damage back onto him, but that siege is gonna be too big for the little Yordle. Yeah, TES really coming out with this fight and keeping this series competitive. Exactly what we would expect. It is a boxing match. It is one that we expect to go all five rounds at least here in this best of five. And it is top esports who have awoken and given BLG a little of their own medicine. And they take a one to one even up here in our best of five in the upper semis, a spot at finals and at MSI on the line.
Exactly right. That's the big one. And for TS, they have never been there. Never been to an MSI. Yep. So I think for them especially, it would be such a, like incredible occasion to be able to actually go all the way. But great game by them. Again, the spicy picks, 369, Jakulov really stepping up. You just got to see the classic TS playing the map in mid-game. Yeah, it uh, is a wonder to behold. Now I expect more fighting pre-10 minutes next game. Uh, we're going to sit away to a little break on the other side. We'll have our LPL lounge to break that one down.